Hi again, Mark here from Talking Bass. Last week we looked at the pros and cons of the Fender Precision, the granddaddy of all basses. Today we're going to look at its rival sibling, the Fender Jazz. The Jazz was released in 1960, so nine years after the original Precision release and three years after the upgraded split coil pickup design. Both the Precision and the Jazz are massively popular and many times beginner players will find themselves making a decision as to whether to buy one or the other. They're both very different basses, so let's look at what's great and what's not so great about the Fender Jazz. So, for the first pro, we have sound and versatility of tone. The Jazz bass has two pickups rather than the single split coil pickup of the Precision. Each pickup is single coil, which provides a bright, more honking sound versus the warmer sound of split coils. Single coils are great, but they do provide a set of their own problems which I'll look at in the cons. As well as the coils, the jazz pickup positions on the body also provide tonal character. The bridge pickup is obviously closer to the bridge, so it magnifies the sound of the string in a much more taut position. Then the neck pickup is magnifying the string vibration at a much more loose position. These factors make a huge differences to the tone of the bass, and then when you factor in the ability to blend those pickups from both at maximum to either soloed, you've got a tonal variety way beyond that of the precision. So let's take a listen to this 1968 Fender Jazz with both pickups on maximum. Next, let's try soloing the pickup. So here's the neck pickup, which gives us more of that precision vibe. Next, if we solo the bridge pickup, we get that stereotypical honking Jaco Pistorius kind of vibe that's very much a Fender Jazz speciality. For slapping, the most common configuration is both pickups on maximum. Then for pick plane, again, it sounds great with both pickups at maximum. Now it's worth bearing in mind that because we have individual control of both pickup volumes, we can blend both pickups in any way that we like, which gives a whole spectrum of different tones that we can play with. For this reason, the Fender Jazz is a really versatile bass when compared with the Fender Precision. For pro number two, we have the slim Fender Jazz neck. One of the cons that I listed for the Precision was the neck width. Some players dislike the wide neck of the P-Bass. The Jazz has a much thinner neck at the nut, so it's much better for players with small hands or those of you that like to move fluidly across strings at speed. Now that's not to say that the Precision can't be played by shredders. Billy Sheehan used the Precision for many, many years before moving to his new Yamahas. He likes the wider neck, many players do, but if you want a slimmer neck, the Fender Jazz is the way to go. So much so that some players mod their Precisions by changing it to a Jazz neck. For Pro number three, we have a Pro that I listed for the Precision. It's the Build. It's a workhorse of a bass. It's a world away from the boutique works of art that you find out there by Ritter, you know, or the expensive super basses like you get from Federa. The Fender Jazz is a workhorse bass that does what it does, and it does it well. It can take the knocks and rigors of the road, and as a massive plus, it's really easy to find replacement parts. Need a replacement truss rod nut? No worries, it's a Fender. Finally, for pro number four, we have another from our precision list, the Lux. The jazz bass, like the precision, is an iconic bass. It just works whatever the situation. Playing in a metal band? Fine. Playing in a country band? No worries. Playing in a funk band? Great. It always fits visually, whatever the musical situation. And because of the tonal variety, from a professional you know, sideman perspective, it's a win-win no matter what gig you're called for. 
So now onto the cons. First up, we've got that huge elephant in the room, single coil hum. When you solo the single coil pickups of a Fender Jazz, you're going to find that they give off quite a bit of noise. This is because the single coils act as an antenna and pick up all of that airborne noise, be it radio frequencies or electromagnetic. When you play with both pickups on maximum, the noise is phase cancelled, so you don't hear it. But when soloed, it can be very annoying. And I don't know if you'll really hear it that much here, but if I solo the bridge pickup, can hear their slight hum that will be picked up on the, on the recording but you know when you really amplify that if you're on stage and you're playing loud you know that can really come up loud now you do have to remember that when you're playing in a band you know playing along with the band this is going to be pretty unnoticeable you know under the drums and playing along with guitars or whatever the only time that you're going to hear it is between songs but when you're practicing at home or recording, you're going to hear it a lot. With good shielding, you can reduce a lot of noise, but it's really hard to get rid of that single uh, coil hum entirely. Many players consider it a cross that they just have to bear for that tone, but for others, it's just too annoying and they'll replace the single coils with hum cancelling pickups by companies like DiMarzio. I fitted my Marcus Miller Signature Jazz with DiMarzio Ultra Jazz hum cancelling pickups and I added a huge amount of copper shielding in the pickup and control cavities. And that bass is pretty silent, but when it comes to a traditional single coil jazz like this one, it is just the nature of those pickups. Con number two is another from the precision list, the frets. Again, we only have 20 frets to play with. And yes, for most people, 20 frets is more than enough because how many times in a regular tune are you really gonna venture up there at the high E, F and Gs on the G string? I mean, even getting up here, you know, you're not gonna be playing that that often. Most bass lines don't even venture up over the 12th fret, but for some players, especially soloists, those extra notes are important. And if you're one of those players, then maybe the Fender Jazz or Fender Precision is not for you. Con number three is also from our pros list, looks. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the Fender Jazz is a workhorse bass that fits into any musical situation. But if you're the kind of player that wants a unique look or something more modern, the Fender Jazz is probably not the bass for you. It's obvious to see here that it has a very generic shape and overall vibe that some players would consider boring. It's the kind of thing that you know, I thought as a teenager, I always wanted something that looked like it was sent from the future. So if you have that outlook and you want something that stands out from the crowd, you're better looking elsewhere. Lastly, for con number four, we've got something that applies equally to the Fender Precision, inconsistency. Now, this isn't necessarily related to quality, although it can factor into the equation. It's more the confusion that you're likely to experience in shopping for one. There are so many models of Fender Jazz. You've got the Made in Mexico line, the Made in Japan line, the Made in America line. You've got the basic standard design, you've got the signature models, the deluxe models, then you've got the Squire versions of the Jazz that are considered, you know, the cheaper budget models, even though some of them are excellent. There's no one Fender Jazz, and the long history of the bass makes for a ridiculously long list of versions going all the way back to 1960. As a rule of thumb, the American standard is the default go-to Fender Jazz, so if you're looking to buy a Jazz, that's your first stop. But a brand new American Standard Jazz can be relatively expensive for what you get. You can be looking at one and a half to two thousand dollars for a new one. The Mexican versions are cheaper and still really good basses. So if the American Jazz is a little too pricey, then a Mexican is still a good buy. A halfway house can be a Japanese built jazz, which I love. I've got a Japanese 82 Fender Jazz that I bought on eBay that you might have seen, uh, the, the green one that you might have seen on some, of the, uh, on some of the videos, and it's a really lovely bass. But as you can tell, just from this little confusing digression, there are a lot of different Fender Jazz basses out there, all with that same logo on the headstock. But just because it looks the same, doesn't mean it is the same. So overall, to summarize, in terms of the pros for the Fender Jazz, we have that great diversity of tone, we've got the slim, speedy neck, we've got that workhorse build and the classic looks. Then for the cons, we've got single coil hum, it only has 20 frets, it's what some might consider visually boring, and there are too many models to choose from. Let me know what you think of the Fender Jazz in the comments below and tell me if I've missed some other important pros and cons. Remember to subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, and then get on over to Talking Bass, the Talking Bass website, where you can sign up for the free membership. Inside, you'll find a ton of free practice resources and downloads like the Scale Reference Manual ebook and you'll be able to mix with over a hundred thousand other bass players in the forums and groups where we have a super friendly thriving community so hit the link in the info below and i'll see you next week